Hello friends and art lovers, this is Liz. Thanks for joining me in today's video. Today's video is about giving tits, bits and techniques on how to do palette knife painting. First off though, I start off with a sketch usually. I prefer to do my sketching with paint. Some use pencil, either way, whichever one you're more comfortable with. If you've noticed, I didn't put much details into the sketch. Because right now, it's just like a place marker so I know where my figure goes and know not to put the dark paint all up on the figure. So I go around the figure, working my paint gently, lighter colors up and the darker colors down. It's not always the lighter colors up and darker colors down. If it's a nighttime scene, you could reverse it and have the lighter colors down and the darker colors up. There's no hard and fast rule about this. It's really up to you. To cover more ground, I use a wider palette knife when I'm doing the background. It makes it go faster. And for the little details and the nooks and corners, mostly I use a paintbrush. I use the brush to fill in all the spaces in between, still holding the place for my figure so I know where the figure goes. I'm speeding it up a little bit now because all I'm doing is filling up the background. The details are not coming till later. It's important to mention the technique I use for my palette knife. To have the colors behind seep through, you have to like roll the palette knife ever so gently. Like you start from the beginning, the edge of the knife, and roll to the other edge of the knife, very softly, like this. Okay now, let me fill in my figures, because they're beginning to disappear between the background. I'm using a darker color. The colors can change as you go, but it's really up to you. Filling in the figure so that I can see my figure separate from the background. It's not very clear yet what I'm trying to do a mother and a child. So if I fill in the dress, that helps to give some contrast and then I can you know, see the mother, the child, the background. The color is totally up to you when you're painting, but it's nice to use com colors that complement each other. Like if I had used blue on that dress, it would blend into the background and that would not work for me. At the same time, I want a color that will also tie in the painting together. Hence, I'm using the yellow. When it's your painting, it's really up to you what colors you use. I'm not going to work on the drapery right now. I'm just trying to fill in the colors and speed it up. And then at the end, then I can start working in the light area, the dark area, the drapery, and all that juicy stuff. Okay, I think you got the whole idea of how to put the figure and put your background. Still doesn't look like a painting, does it? But it takes time, you know, it takes time. You build it layer by layer. The colors you start off with usually are not the colors you end up with. It changes as your mood changes. Our baby needs a leg. That's 
Okay, now gradually I'm beginning to show the light and the dark parts of the painting. It usually helps to know what direction your light is coming from. This helps you when you're shading. So you have an imaginary sun to remind you where your light is coming from. Yeah, baby needs legs. Let's add some legs to that baby. It's really up to you. You could also choose to have a baby with no legs. It's your painting, your idea, your own creativity. That's why art is so cool. You do you. <laughs> okay, fill in the legs. There, I see the legs. little details and then when you do have mistakes and errors which will happen it's easy to just paint over them there chain done when the paint dries up a little bit the baby might need another arm I think perhaps another leg the other side. there it is thank you